elements and three spear of Heliots. It's really kind of an old school white weenie deck. All one drops in a glory and glorious anthems. Yeah, I mean, he looks like he has absolutely no interest in playing a long game. He wants to get the game over with as, just as quickly as he can, does Miriam. He's going to start off with a one drop, itch dried militant. He's going to pass the turn back, making Craig Wesco proud as Nicholas Heal is going to play a fire drinker satyr and pass the turn back. Yeah, both players with two ones for one. Um, so, typically in this matchup, you know, you're very familiar with white aggro decks. What is one of some of the, the strengths that they gain against these red decks? I mean, the first, a, a great place to start is you're just going to see a temple here from Ross is first strike. Some of your creatures are probably going to have first strike because white is a first strike, you know, color. So a card like Precinct Captain is going to be absolutely fantastic. A card like Brave the Elements is going to be really good against them too. Things get better after sideboard, of course, but before we do get there, I mean, a card like Spear of Heliod, or if it's Glorious Anthem, or if it's Honor of the Pure, just making your creatures bigger than theirs is also a great avenue to victory. Yeah. So we see from Ross, Judge is familiar, so that is his second one drop. The third one drop he's playing in his deck as a four of is, to no surprise to people who've seen the spoiler, is Soldier of the Pantheon, probably the best one drop of all three. You see the Fire Drinker's gonna come in, Judge is familiar in the way, gonna block, gonna deal, heal a point of damage because of Fire Drinker's ability, it's basically a Jackal Pup. And now we see, I believe that's a Magma Jet, gonna take care of the Dried Militant. Bottoms up for the Scry, I'm gonna pass the turn back. So after turn two, both sides are clear. Remember, both of these are one-drop aggro decks. Um, they do, there are some trump cards that can happen here. Perforos, God of the Forge is kind of the big card for Nicholas, but he has to watch out because Ross plays Spear of Heliod. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see a Legion Loyalist, Legion Loyalist, excuse me, get played there from heal and just pass the turn back. He's got two mana available. Cards he can represent with that are Shock, Lightning Strike, and Magma Jet. As here's a Banisher Priest from Merriam says I'm going to target at Legion Loyalist. Heal says that's perfectly fine. In with the Skyjack, is that a okay? Kill spell, mm -hmm. and yeah, and you have to, Ross has to know this is coming, but the kill spell does not work because Ross is playing Brave the Elements. I want to see you be brave, Ross, and that's exactly what he did, is Heal's going to play a mountain and pass the turn back. Brave the Elements, a fantastic card from the white deck. What I like about Ross's deck here is that Brave the Elements is one way to counteract removal spell, Boros Charm being the other. Right, so he was saying his deck is very robust to sweepers because he has answers to Anger of the Gods and Supreme Verdict mm -hmm. and the Boros Charms and, and Brave the Elements. You know what I like about the answers to his sweepers too is that they're versatile. Brave the Elements being a great, you know, answer to Anger of the Gods would also let you attack for lethal because it's a falter effect. You see a shock here. Ross looks like he's going to say absolutely not. Boros Charm make my guys indestructible. Speaking of that red-white instant, versatile, good against Supreme Verdict and also just go to the dome too. Yeah, a lot of this matchup is going to be, Ooh. wow, and a, a, a turn of events for heal. He's down to four, but Ross <laughs> had the second Boros Charm. Miriam shows him copy number two of Boros Charm, Patrick, Patrick Sullivan's Invitational card, and we'll be moving on to a second game here pretty quickly. Patrick Sullivan's Invitational card. Absolutely. Really? He loves Boros Charm. Okay. Not actually. Was he had no hand in the design? Of no, of course okay. not. But if he did, well, that's... he designs cards. They know the, that's, that's true. One of his apps. He worked in R and D. Not it was for WoW, right? For yeah, WoW he did it for TCG. yeah for the WoW TCG. Oh, for, and you know he does it for uh, he works for Soulforge as well, Stoneblade Games. Mm -hmm. And if he was designing cards for Magic, I'm sure he would have been pushing that one hard in development. All right. Hard to imagine he wouldn't be. Uh, we'll go to heal sideboard first. The model red. As you mentioned, pretty tough matchup here for him. Well, game one actually seems somewhat close. I think Nicholas just drew a few more lands than Ross, and that turned out to be the difference. Ross was able to score some free points of damage. Unfortunately for Heal, the reason this is often a bad matchup is that White gets great sideboard cards against Red. Uh, Red has a little more trouble with it. What is it that Heal's going to bring to the table? I mean, Red's got four copies of Mizium Warriors, which he can bring in. So if he is flooding out a little bit, the overload is certainly manageable. He can also use it as just a removal spell. But, you know, the question you have to ask yourself now is, does he actually want a removal spell that doesn't go upstairs? He's got Shock, Lightning Strike, and a Magma Jet already. Does he want to dilute his deck with all these removal spells and not have enough creatures to actually attack with? That's an actual concern for him. His other cards in his sideboard, for, for Skullcrack, eh, meh. More for Sphinx's Revelation. A Muta Vault, for when he actually moves into those mortars, I think is pretty smart. He also has a card in Ember Swallower, which is the four mana four five, so that when he's actually boarding those in, he actually has more lands to be able to cast his spells as he's starting 22 lands. And then three copies of Burning Earth, clearly not for this matchup. Yeah, so I don't, Lemizium Mortars, I think is just a removal spell. I can't imagine him ever getting to overload it. We may see him play Ember Swallower because there's a lot of trading that goes on in this matchup. Big creature. You know, yeah, so it's like, it's a kind of an attrition-y matchup. And, you know, we saw in the past when white aggro decks played a mirror, they often board in their hero of blade horns. Mm -hmm. That was a couple years ago. You know, they what they wanted was this four drop that just dominates the board. Ember Swallower might be 
is very nice to it. This might be the red hero of Blade Hold in this matchup. He just wants a four drop that's bigger than everything else. I don't think we're going to see anything else coming out of the board from him, though. Yeah, me either. I mean, we've seen this before. Red decks have employed this strategy against white decks. Basically, their four mana, their four mana creature is their big one from years past. We've seen Fledgling Dragon play that role. If you're even older like I am, you've seen Wrathy Dragon play that role. You have to sacrifice two mountains for the 5-5 five, five flyer, but it stood supreme on the board, and we could see Ember Swallower do the same thing. Ross is probably going to try to counteract that, though. Well, Ross brings in four Boros Reckoners. That's a card that Heal has in the main deck. It's in Ross's sideboard. If he's going to bring that in, that card is excellent against red decks. They can't... It's very... It's very hard for them to get around it without getting two for one. Ross will certainly bring those in. Outside of that, he has some options. Electricery takes care of only six creatures in Heal's deck. Ross may end up bringing it in because of what he saw that game. Okay. Um, there's also, he has a precinct, he has the last precinct captain. I think that almost certainly gets boarded in. For sure. And he has the possibility to play Gideon Champion of Justice here. I know he was talking to me about Gideon. He said that was the four drop he was hoping to play. You know, the, the big spell. Okay. So there, there's a chance he brings it in. I, I'm not positive he does here. Interesting thing I like about Ross's deck, and something again that we talked about with both Green, White, and Mono Red when Turtwall was playing during round uh, during round five on camera, is that all the aggressive decks that we have seen so far, you know, we see the two aggressive decks here. For the control decks, they make it be Supreme Verdict or bust. Ross's deck falls in that camp as well, I believe, and he has the Trump to it in Boros Charm to actually counter it. So that's a pretty nice thing to have access to. Well, what I like about it, so you see the Green White decks, their Trump to it is Rootborn Defenses. Ross's Trumps to the Sweepers, which are Brave the Elements and Boros Charm, are a lot more mana efficient so he can continue to play out his hand mm -hmm. while leaving up that protection that's something that green white has a little more trouble doing yeah because green white's creatures they're much bigger but they're also more expensive exactly one card in ross's deck that we haven't seen show up to the party just yet but soldier of the Pathanon. big fan of that card i mean it's the best savannah lions variant i think to date um yeah i think so i, I don't know if it even has competition right now yeah. at least not in white uh, we saw judges familiars you know, one of the better ones, but no, this one with protection from multicolor, it does all sorts of things. We were talking about it, you know, it even swings past Blood Baron of Viscopa right mm -hmm. now. You know, it gives you that extra turn to deal with that. It's, it really is very strong. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that does end up showing up here again. Merriam stack, a lot of four of there with the soldier, with the dried militant, judge's familiar, daring skyjack, uh, four banisher priests in his main deck as well, and then three imposing sovereign and three priests in captain are his creatures. Spear of Heliot, a card that we saw a lot yesterday during the team sealed portion. Thought we'd see some numbers of it in constructed. It does show up here as being a glorious anthem effect. The second part of it doesn't really come up very often, but the interesting thing about Spear is that it's legendary. Right, so you can't actually play four of them. Three is probably the most you can play because it doesn't really leave the table very often. Mm -hmm. you know, so getting doubles of it happens a fair amount. Ross says it's a really important sideboard card in his deck because his deck is very soft to electricery effects right now. Okay. Almost everything in his deck is an X1, so a lot of matchups he's found that Spear has been very important for him. We see Heal's going to start off with a mountain and a Rakdos Cackler that's unleashed. Mariam has this Soldier of Car a Pantheon, so nice yeah. Rakdos Cackler. Yeah, Cackler is a black-red card, so actually it can't get through there. Ooh, that's going to bite the dust. Magma Jet is going to allow Heal to scry. We saw him put two on the bottom last time. Uh-oh. This is much stronger. This is two on the top. Got to be scared of that if you're Miriam. He's going to come across for two. Put Ross down to 18. Miriam going to draw a card. You see a Precinct Captain over there. You see a Temple as well, so Lance coming to play tap can be a bit of an issue with well, that. This is what you're saying, though, where Ross's creatures just match up really nicely. We've seen Ross play two of the cards he has, a Soldier of the Pantheon and Precinct Captain. Neither of those cards trades with Rakdos Cackler. They actually just eat Rakdos Cackler. Yeah, which is really, really nice. As you see, Heal is just going to miss his land drop and pass the turn. Judge is familiar in the house. Can't make Ash Zealot cost one more, but it can come across in the sky. I can heal down to 19. Miriam going to scry yet again, see if he likes what he sees. He does. He's going to follow up with a Precinct Captain and kick it back to Heal. Yeah, the Judge's Familiar is really relevant here. We've seen that Heal's removal spells um, are Magma Jets, Lightning Strikes, and Shocks. So if it's a Lightning Strike or a Magma Jet he has to do with Precinct Captain, Judge's Familiar actually can counter that spell right now. And he also has a Mortars in his hand as well right now. You see a Magma Jet over there as well. And again, Judge's Familiar proving to be pretty difficult right now. A card I did not expect to be very good in this matchup. Proving to be difficult right now, as here comes the Ash Zealot. Yeah, so red, all, you said white gets first strike. You know, red does get first strike sometimes too. Actually, Axel is the only first striker in Heal's deck. Mm -hmm. Well, Boros Reckoner also sure. gets first strike. 
Graham draws a pacifism, gonna turn his creature sideways here. Heal says, all right, I'm gonna take the damage from the precinct captain, in comes the soldier token. This is really aggressive from Ross, especially because, as we've seen, um, he's down by so much life and he's against a deck that plays Burn. Um, he has a lot of faith in Boros Reckoner right now. He's got a lot of faith in that, and he's got a lot of faith in that he can win the race. And he's got cards like Brave the Elements and Boros Charm to give him the reach to be able to do that. So he's going to turn his guys sideways. He knows that Heal doesn't have any land, and I think he's ready to sacrifice that Judge's Familiar if he needs to. Well, I think what he's building up toward is that he wants to get a Precinct Captain hit in because he has Spear of Heliod in his hand right now. Sure. Any chance he can get to put more creatures on the board just makes Spear of Heliod that much better of a card. So now there is the Magma Jet. The trigger has been pulled finally by Heal. You can tell he's not thrilled about that. It actually, in reality, is going to kill Judge's Familiar, and I think Ross is thrilled with that trade as Heal draws a Boros Reckoner, but it's not land number three for him. So now he's going to go Mizzy and Mortars the Precinct Captain. That's going to resolve, but now he's just got a Minotaur Wizard to deal with. That's all. Right, but he can't deal with Boros Reckoner. That card is so strong against Mono Red. And Miriam has another one in his hand. Again, all four of his Boros Reckoners are in his sideboard. He's going to play a second Muta Vault here. I think it might be a Spear time. It is. So Boros Reckoner turns into a 4-4. That makes the card really hard to deal with. Muta Vault's going to be a 3-3, three, three, too. It's just going to swing as a 3-3. Three, three. I kind of like this attack, too. He's, he's still being you know, aggressive, but playing a little bit of defense. You, you don't look thrilled about it. No, I like it, actually. He gets to play defense here because, remember, next turn, he can just turn the corner and be extremely aggressive. He can swing two Muta Vaults, a Boros Reckoner, and a Soldier Token if he wants. That's a swing of 12. Nicholas is at 13. Okay. You know, so I like that he gets, because of, I like that his deck gets to be defensive up until that turn where it's very aggressive. So you see Spear making the creature a little bigger. There is a second Ash Zealot. So some first strike in the house for Mer for excuse me for heal something that Miriam's deck often does better than a red strategy. But one thing that Miriam's deck is able to do that heals cannot is make the creatures bigger. And you can see Spears having a pretty large impact on this game. Yeah, the Muta Vaults would normally not be able to swing through Ash Zealot, but now they really don't care. Pacifism going to come down, take care of that Ash Zealot. In comes the Minotaur Wizard for Miriam. No good blocks available. Follow up <laughs> Boros Reckoner. Miriam says, I'm empty handed, but I don't think I need anything else to win this game. Yeah. Um, he would have to worry about some sort of sweeper, typically, but, but there's nothing that there's mm -hmm. nothing that deals with it here. No. Again, those Reckoners are going to be 4 fours because of the Spear. So even if Heal had a card like Anger of the Gods, wouldn't be able to take care of the Reckoners, and he would have to take six damage to do so. Miriam was saying this is one of his best matchups in the room, if not the best mm -hmm. matchup. And, you know, we're really seeing it play out here. Spear of Heliod and Boros Reckoner are just so good in this matchup. Yeah, they really, really are. And, again, Reckoner is just a great card in mono-white in general. Just really good against red, pretty good against green-white as well. Not the best clock against an Esper type strategy, but that's why you find it in the sideboard. It looks to be a very, very good sideboard for this deck and po potentially in this format. Yeah, interesting note. I, what I'm interested in is that Ross Merriam's deck is playing Zero Heliod God of the Sun. That's a card that's really been hyped up in this archetype mm -hmm. a lot. You know, he's playing cards like Boros Reckoner, Precinct Captain, Spear of Heliod, cards with lots of white mana symbols. Um, it's to believe that the card just is too expensive for the deck. You'd rather just have Spears and Reckoners. I mean, it wouldn't be a very hard card to turn on. Devotion, Not at all. Devotion I mean, seems very easy this time. Right. I think it's, one of the things he's saying is that if you can turn on Devotion, the problem is when they turn off Devotion, then you lose your Heliod as well. Mm -hmm. Something else that's kind of interesting too is that you see, you know, you saw Turtonwall a little bit earlier, not playing Burning Earth, so he was stopping his mana curve at three. I think we, for the most part, see the same thing here. The only four mana spell we have in uh, Miriam's deck was that Gideon Champion of Justice in the sideboard. The one of out of the sideboard. Yeah. Um, he does not, no, he really doesn't have four mana spells. People stopping their curve at three mana in this format. Certainly the aggro decks are, uh, and part of that is a testament to how good creatures are right now. We saw in the green-white deck, the whole deck's at two, and its creatures are, you know, three threes, four fours, five fives. You don't need to pay a lot of mana to get a large creature. You see Heal going through the iterations in his hand, not particularly thrilled that he does have to pass the turn back. Miriam's going to move those Muta Vaults to the side. He's going to activate them both. He's going to turn every creature he has sideways. And this should be lethal. I don't... And <laughs> he'll lightning says, strike himself. I'm going to lightning strike myself. I'm going to block here. He's going to block a Boros yeah. Reckoner. He's going to take as much damage as he possibly can. Yeah. And that is going to He's going to remove, be remove the counter from his cackler and block the other yeah. Reckoner. So <laughs> Ross Merriam is going to win this match two games to zero over Nicholas Heal. Boros is going to be moving on over Mono Red. 
So Mara moves on to six and one this weekend as we'll be moving to